Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. I'm Janelle and I make both faith-based and lifestyle content here on YouTube and in today's video I wanted to share my experience with anxiety and how anxiety was a huge part of my testimony and a huge part of me coming to Christ or really confirming that Christ is who he says he is because I feel like I have been radically healed from anxiety. I'll share a little bit my experience and verses I cling to when anxiety starts to creep up. I can sit here and say that I'm healed, but I mean, anxiety will come up in situations. You also want to understand the difference between nerves and anxiety and things like that. So my experience with anxiety, I bring it back to freshman year of high school. That is the first time somebody actually pointed out to me that I was awkward. Ever since then, I became more awkward because now I'm aware of it and now I'm questioning what I'm doing, which is making me less confident, more awkward, and ultimately more anxious and socially uncomfortable. Fast forward to college, I was still very anxious. I moved cities and started in a college, a really big public university where I didn't know anybody and there I made no friends because I was very standoffish, uncomfortable, awkward, and I ate in my car. So I transferred schools to a smaller private university and that is where I really told myself, I am gonna put myself out there, I'm going to make a change and I'm going to try being more social and so I did and I did make friends pretty quickly and I quickly started going out drinking doing all the things which relieved a lot of my anxiety but that's a band-aid we all know alcohol is not the answer to our anxiety that band-aid worked for a couple years it really did I would become the most drunk one in the group the one dancing on stage the one laying over on a couch outside like who the fact that I have been safe every single time is a miracle. So then in my day-to-day -day life, throughout the day, work, school, things like that, I was still pretty anxious. And I started to notice the last year, two years, that it started to get worse. I got in a relationship and I started second guessing everything about my relationship. I started making up things in my head that weren't there. I think that has to do with the relationships I was in before this one. So in this relationship, I would find any reason to pick something wrong as a defense mechanism to maybe be like, oh, this isn't working, I don't need this, and just kind of like feel like I got this on my own kind of thing. I was very scared to get too comfortable with somebody to feel vulnerable. I started having way more frequent periods of anxiety and intrusive thoughts and ultimately just spiraling. The more I was anxious about a situation, the more lies I would make up. And now looking back, I could totally see that as a tactic of the enemy, you know, making me feel like something's wrong and then just digging and digging and digging and twisting things that are not even there. So then I saw a therapist and the therapist recommended that I write down when I'm anxious and start to understand what my anxiety was tied to. I noticed that other than relationships, my anxiety was very much based around time management. A lot of the times I'd be super anxious feeling like I'm not doing enough or that I'm gonna be late for something. I'm very type A and I like things like very organized or at the time I was more like that. So I was very anxious if like somebody was making me late for an event or if I didn't make it to the gym five days a week and that tied into the whole hustle culture thing. And I have a video on the dangerous side of hustle culture because although we are meant to work hard, I took it to the extreme with hustle culture and consuming and consuming so much of that kind of content that I thought that was normal. And if I wasn't living up to that, that made me anxious. And so all of these things happen. And what did I end up doing? Believing the lie of the enemy that year after year my anxiety is getting worse because people in my family have anxiety People that are older than me distant family immediate family if they have it and they're older and theirs seems worse than mine Mine must just be getting worse with age and I just kept telling myself that my anxiety is getting worse with age That was my thing. I was scared. I'm like if I don't nip this in the butt now I'm gonna be screwed and it's crazy that once I gave that load to the Lord and said, hey, I know you want to carry this load for me. Why am I even carrying this load? What is the point of carrying this load? And I think it was just full faith and trust in Jesus and truly believing that he can cure my anxiety. Choosing to remain strong rather than victim, or like they say in my church, 
being victorious rather than victim. You know, it, it's really about your attitude and the way you react to situations. You can choose to continue to be in that victim mentality and choose to be anxious or you can surrender it all to God and say, hey, why am I carrying this? Ultimately, it was a control issue for me too. I had control issues and I felt like if I can control time and the things I'm doing and if I really pieced my life together in the perfect way, that I would have this all figured out. And when I'm anxious, when I was in that state of mind with spiraling thoughts, God was the last thing on my mind. I was not turning to God at all. It's the opposite. I was just in, in myself, in my flesh. Finally surrendering that anxiety, saying I don't need to hold on to this. I don't know, like since being saved, I have not had that kind of anxiety. I've had vulnerable moments. I've had nervous moments before calling a client that I know is upset, like typical things, right? I'm really running late, traffic is bad. It's really just like healthy anxiety rather than this thing is taking over and I'm having days in bed where I'm like incapable of doing things because I'm so anxious. And when you realize that a lot of your anxiety comes from people pleasing, control issues, believing lies of the enemy, all of this can be turned around if surrendered to God. And that's the hardest thing to do is surrender, but it is truly what saved me. And now when I'm anxious for something or when I feel that feeling of anxiety coming or if I'm in a situation that like previously made me really anxious and I start to think about it, I think about these few verses that I'd like to share. So we're going to turn to Luke chapter 12 and I'm gonna read verses 22 through 29. Then Jesus said to his disciples, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or about your body, what you will wear. For there is more to life than food and more to the body than clothing. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. How much more value are you than the birds? And here's the big one. And which to you by worrying can add an hour to his life? So if you cannot do such a very little thing as this, why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the flowers grow. They do not work or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his glory was clothed like one of these. And if this is how God clothes the wild grass, which is here today and tomorrow's tossed into the fire to heat the oven, how much more will he clothe you, people of little faith? Do not be overly concerned about what you'll eat and what you'll drink. Do not worry about such things. In the literal sense, yes, this verse talks about not worrying about the food that you're eating or the clothes that you're wearing. But in the grand scheme of things, God's really saying, do not worry. And there's so many verses in the Bible that say, don't be afraid. I tie this with anxiety because I get anxious and I worry about things that are out of my control or things that I think I have control over, but I have not surrendered control of those things over to God yet. I guess if I can offer one piece of advice, if you don't know why you're anxious or you feel like you really cannot get a grasp on this thing, ask God to get a grasp on it for you. And Ask him to show you when you're anxious, why you're anxious, and what you should be seeking instead, which ultimately will lead you back to him. So when I hear the verse about the lilies, I think back to Joseph Prince and one of his sermons that I listened to. I love when it says, they toil not. They don't spin or toil, which is like, you know, they're not getting anxious, they're not freaking out, they're just being still, and God provides. That really struck something in me because that's how I get sometimes. I'm like anxious and impatient and I want something and I'm doing everything I can about trying to control the situation when really I should be still, peaceful, patient, and giving it to God. So I'm gonna close with this. Let God take the load. Ask him to save you, ask him to heal you, ask him to be there in your presence. When you're feeling anxious, seek him because that's what I wasn't doing. When I was anxious, I wasn't seeking him. I was too upset, I wanted to be upset, I believed the lies, and that's not what helped me. Getting saved and then asking God for wisdom is what helped me. That took a lot of time. But if I could go back, I would pray before ranting to anybody else or sulking in my bed. I would read the word and I would pray. I really hope that you guys can take something from this because this is probably the biggest thing that took a hold on me before being saved was how anxious I was. Feeling like I had complete control. I heard someone say, as soon as they started to feel like they could take control again and that they could win this thing of life, that's when they lost. As soon as they're like, yeah, maybe I, I don't need God. Maybe I got this. That is when we fail. I think I'm going to wrap the video up here. Let me know if there's anything specific you want to see from me. I am happy to take requests. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe down below and I will see you in my next video. Bye.